please give Gareth Edwards another Star Wars movie. Please give Gareth Edwards another Star Wars movie. Welcome back everyone to the Grizzly Reviews channel. My name is Garrett and today I'm bringing you a review for The Creator. This is the newest movie from Gareth Edwards. He's the director of Rogue One. Now that is plastered on all of the promotional material for this movie, which is kind of perfect because I view Rogue One as one of the better Star Wars movies just on cinematography alone. It's a beautiful movie and the creator just continues that trend at being one of the most dazzling science fiction movies ever created. Against the backdrop of a war between humans and robots with artificial intelligence, a former soldier finds the AI's secret weapon a robot in the form of a young child. So of the movies coming out this week, Saw X, I don't care for, I'm not gonna go see it, don't ask me to see it, the new Paw Patrol movie, and The Creator, I was most excited for The Creator. I love a good science fiction movie, I love a good action movie, I love John David Washington, and of course, Gareth Edwards, director of Rogue One, gorgeous movie, I was here for this one. And it was such a good time, great time at the movies, you're gonna feel such an emotional spectrum with this film and I think that's what makes it so good is how much you care about these characters. It takes a little bit of time for you to get to know Joshua and root for him as the main character of this movie but as the plot progresses and you find some more stuff out and relationships between him and Alfie are developed you just care for them. The chemistry between John David Washington and Madeline Una Voiles is just really good. They have great on-screen chemistry. You root for them. You're excited when they're on screen interacting together. Like, it's very entertaining. So to continue on with this synopsis, in this world, humans created robots a lot sooner than we did in our timeline. The way they show this is by using, like, old film that was created for this movie. And it just shows the progression of robots developing which is awesome. And then they show that AI was created and how AI starts like influencing robots into the jobs we have. And then suddenly a nuke goes off in Los Angeles. It's so off-putting. It made me just so uncomfortable because I wasn't expecting that to happen. And then it cuts to 10 years later where I think the president or someone is giving like a speech that it's like, we're attacking robots and we just created this huge ship took us 10 years to do it, and now we're at war with the AI robots who live in New Asia now. So for a while in this movie, you're kind of just like, what's happening? What, who is the good guy, who is the bad guy? Like a lot of people just died in Los Angeles, so you're like, are these robots against people? But when you think about the three laws of robotics, they should not be able to harm people. So it's just like, I don't know, I guess the AI makes them allowed to do whatever they want in that sense. Like, I I don't know. Like, it's, su it's, it's super weird. If you think about this movie too hard, I think it kind of breaks apart, but that's what science fiction is. Like, good science fiction kind of just takes your mind away and a good movie especially allows you to not nitpick those parts of the movie. Doesn't help. I'm just nitpicking it way after I saw it. I saw it yesterday in the time I'm filming this. I'm filming it Friday. So it takes a little bit of time for this movie to get going. It sets up a lot of plot and character dynamics first, and then we get into the action stuff. This is not really an action movie. Like there are sequences of action, but it's nothing intense or like spectacular. Very run-of-the-mill gun violence shooting. You're not gonna get hand-to-hand -hand combat, really. So there's kind of two different types of robots. There are regular robots that have AI, and then there's another thing called simulants, that they have a human face and body. They're a robot, of course, but they're made to act like humans, but when they are made, they are forever stuck in that specific time that they are made, if that makes sense. Like if a person is 30 and they get scanned and donate their likeness, when they're 30, that simulant is gonna forever look like 30. But the wild thing is, is that because they have a human face, they are able to display human emotion and even a regular robot itself by its like voice speaking. It's really trippy 
and some characters react to it like, wow, that robot has emotions. Um, I don't like that you just killed it. And they kind of just have like a little bit of an existential crisis happening in the moment, which is something I assume I would go through if I was like, if I had to kill a simulant and they're pleading to me because they want to survive and live because they are essentially their own being. Like not every simulant is programmed the same way. So they're like, they're individuals in that sense. It's a very good ethical and moral movie. Like it's, I'm thinking about it a lot and I really appreciate the movie for doing that. Story-wise, I had a great time with this movie. I think it could get like 10 minutes shaved off a little bit, just make the pace go a little bit faster. But that 10 minutes aside, this movie is fucking dazzling to look at. Marvel should take notes from how this movie is done. Like the visual effects are, oh God, wow. At the beginning of the movie, there's a sequence of military members like rising out of the water and coming onto this beach. And in the background, you see the lights from this giant ship, the Nomad, coming like hitting down and it's able to like track and find robots and things. But the way it looks just looks so real because you're in a real life location. They're filming this in real places on earth. It's not some completely digital created environment. So because the place that they're in are real and the people that are there are real, you buy that all of the robots and visual effects that had to go into this movie are also real. Do they make practical robots? I don't know. I haven't really looked into the making of this movie yet. So Marvel just needs to stop blue screening their movies. It looks ugly. Quantumania is maybe the worst looking of the Marvel movies because of that reason. Just make things more realistic. That's all I want you to do, Marvel. The acting. John David Washington does a fantastic job carrying this movie. You care for his character a lot, especially once you realize what he's been through his entire life and what his goals are during this movie. They do change at one point, which I'm happy for because it changes his drive to something more honorable, I guess. And then Madeline Una Voiles as Alfie. She's hilarious. She has some of the best jokes in this movie. There's some humor, not a lot, but the humor that is there I got a laugh from me every time. I really like the humor in this movie. It's just funny seeing kids curse and she just handles that so well. I love the character of Alfie. I'm just... Uh, she has such a great arc in this movie. I hope this young actress gets to do a lot more in the business. I think this might be my favorite Gemma Chan role. She doesn't have a lot to do in the movie, but what she does is excellent. I kind of was like, is that Gemma Chan? I don't know if it is. It, it, it just didn't hit for me that that, that that was Gemma Chan while I was watching it. Ken Watanabe is also in this movie. He was in Rogue One as well. And he is a simulant, one of the robots that look like a human. He does great, but I kind of have a problem with the way the visual effects to make the simulant stuff look where like he has a face and like the top of his head, but then like, the side where the ears are, are kind of gone. So sometimes when he's kind of looking directly at camera and you don't really see like the sides of his head, it's very off-putting. It kind of just looks like they just cut part of his face off in the visual effects department. That's such a nitpick thing about this movie and how that looked. It just, it's a little distracting. And finally, I'll talk about Allison Janey. I like her in this movie. She's pretty great. It's fun to see her in science fiction roles and more of like a drama than a more comedy heavy stuff. I like what she does in this movie. And the music throughout the movie. I was kind of getting a Tenet vibe from it. So it's very interesting to see that it was Hans Zimmer that did the music in this movie. It's pretty okay until the very end. The closing music of this film is just so good. It is a perfect finale score. It's gorgeous. Like if you had to pick a single piece of music from the entire year in film, maybe the finale of the creator is above it all. But it felt like Ludwig Jorensen 
was doing the music of this. I don't know if they have like a work relationship, those two, I don't know. But it just sounded a little bit like Tenet for a bit. Maybe that's just like the new style of music that's coming in, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna get into some spoiler thoughts. So if you don't want to get spoiled by anything, jump to this time and spoilers begin now. So towards the end of the second act, we find Gemma Chan's Maya again. And she is basically comatose after the bomb that went off at the beginning of the movie. We kill her and then we get her mind and a little chip. And then Joshua and Alfie get captured by the US military. The third act of this movie kind of loses it for me. Everything is very convenient and easy for these characters. And there's no sense of how much time has passed for a plan to have come up with or allies for him to do this. Joshua is just able to do this all on his own. It's a great ride that you go on with him, but when you think about it a little bit too much, it just kind of falls apart. Let me explain why. He tells Alfie that she's going to go and stand by instead of turn off and off for them means like death. So she's just turning herself off standby instead of off dead, if that makes sense. Then on their way to go incinerate Alfie, he's able to flip the car, exit at the exact place he wants to, somehow get her to an airport where for some reason, we're just now learning that they can go to the moon, takes that ship, goes to the Nomad, which is also somehow very close, but then also like, it somehow moves really fast. I don't know how this works. Um, it, locationally, I'm confused where everything takes place. I guess they're in Los Angeles, so it's easy to go over the water. I'm, I don't know. Then they're able to get a nomad, blow it up successfully. In the process, um, Alfie finds a simulant of Maya and creates her. And then there's this Dr. Octavius robot lookalike thingy that somehow is just brought up in this, like brought up in the finale as like the big final antagonist boss thing. It's so convenient, everything these characters have to go through and there's no setup. Like <laughs> if we knew that they could go to the moon earlier in the movie, I may not have as big of a gripe or if they showed this robot with these tentacle arms, I also wouldn't have a gripe against that because it's set up earlier in the movie instead of just being something that's randomly brought up. But I will say, Gareth Edwards knows how to end a movie. Rogue One is a tragedy. This is a little bit of a tragedy with like some good sides. I don't love how similar the endings of these movies are, how like it's a bittersweet, happy ending. Maybe that's just the way he likes his movies. I don't know. They end up blowing up Nobad and it falls, but Joshua can't get into the escape pod that Alfie is in. So Alfie survives and Joshua meets the simulant of Maya. And early in the movie, he said that he would do anything to get another minute with her. So it makes sense like where the characters end up, but it's just a tragic, bittersweet ending, very reminiscent of Rogue One. Another reason why it's kind of perfect to just put that in the promotional material of this movie. And then it takes them a really long time to reveal some things in this movie. Like the fact that Alfie is made from the mind of the embryo that Maya and Joshua made together. Like it's an obvious she's his kid situation from the very beginning. They have a very fatherly daughter relationship throughout the movie. So revealing it towards the end of the third act is like, yeah. I guess that it's not a big reveal, move along movie. It wasn't a surprise when it felt like it was supposed to be a surprise. And then my last complaint, a lot of characters get introduced in this movie and then they're kind of just gone within five or 10 minutes. A bit of a bummer because I would have liked to get to know these characters more, but Gareth Edwards, again, like Rogue One, loves to just kill off his characters. It's so frustrating how similar this movie is to Rogue One, but it's also so good on its own. Like for an original science fiction movie, this is great, top tier. Um, this will probably make my top 10 list this year. So the creator, I fucking love this movie. It's so much fun. 
It is visually outstanding. I hope the entire team that makes this movie gets to make another Star Wars film because I think they could visually change how Star Wars looks. I think we're getting a bit too VFX focused instead of keeping things in reality. So I hope they can bring that magic to Star Wars. I will see every movie Gareth Edwards makes from now on. Hopefully they're not the same movie, but this movie is awesome. It's visually entertaining. The characters are so fun and lovable. It's a great time at the movies. I'm gonna give the creator a nine out of 10. I know it got a little harsh in the spoiler section and that's all real nitpicky stuff, but overall, the emotional journey I went on through this film, how much I cared about the characters, how awesome this movie was to look at. It just won me over and the gripes that I have with this movie, I'm willing to overlook because I enjoyed it so much. Like if you haven't seen Rogue One, you're not gonna understand the parallel story-wise that the creator has with Rogue One. I walked out of the movie theater so emotionally vulnerable and drained. I, uh, wow, what a time at the movies. You have to go see the creator. And if you have, please let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. I just can't believe how good the robots looked in this movie. I don't know what the budget is. I've avoided like any articles and any reviews about this movie because this is what I did want to make a review on. So I don't know. Now it's time to go spend a couple hours learning how this movie was made.